Hey, welcome back. I'm so excited. Uh, today we are back with the series of Get to Know Your School Board Member, and we are wrapping up uh, this series with Dr. David Naylor, Jr., who's been in the community for a long time. Uh, he is a longtime Wampus Cat. Uh, his kids have gone to school here, and he's got several family members that have been part of this community for a, a very long time. So welcome, Dr. Naylor. I'm, I'm excited for you to join me today. Well, hey, I appreciate it. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. always good to be in, here in the boardroom and, and be part of this district. It's just an awesome district that's been part of my life for a long time. Yes, sir. And, and thank you for your service as a board member. And uh, the first question I have for Dr. Naylor is, what has inspired you to serve as a school board member? And what do you love about being a board member? You know, the thing that inspired me is I, I come from, as you do, I come from a household of educators. Mm -hmm. I've got a mom that was elementary school principal forever. I've got a father that was an instructor at UCA for many years and so grew up around education. Went to school till I was almost 30 um, and went to all the board meetings during COVID and stuff and just thought that being on the medical side that that, that would be a little different to add to the board. And, and that ins really inspired me to run. And you're, you're wrapping up your second year as a board member, <clears throat> and, and when you look at the time that you've spent in the community, yeah. what you know about the schools individually, and then also as your kids have gone through the school system, um, what projects or achievements or things have you seen or that you're hopeful about seeing that, that you're excited about as a school board member? Well, you know, I, one thing I'm excited about is we've got some building projects coming up. We've, we're looking at the junior high and the career center, um, baseball, softball, so I'm excited about those. I think uh, we can help at the junior high with what we're looking at. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about um, where the district's headed. Yes, sir. I really am excited. Uh, that we've always had really good teachers and administrators here. Back as far as I can remember, we've always had great educators. I mean, we still have great educators. And so we've got to work on keeping those educators. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited also about being able to tackle some of the things in the district that uh, public schools all over the nation tackle. So we're looking at discipline and stuff to help, help our teachers so that they stay fresh and that they want to come back each year and teach. Yes, sir. Because without, without these good teachers teaching and wanting to keep the job, um, public education, all educations will be in trouble. Yes, sir. So we've got to support them, and I'm excited about some of the stuff we're looking at. That's a critical point, and we've talked to a lot of board members about um, serving the teachers, serving the staff, working with 10,000 students, and we've got over 1,300 mm -hmm. employees across the district. And so if you would, speak a little bit about, you know, you came to several board meetings prior to serving as a board member, uh, which showed you were invested in the community. You wanted to be a part of this process to how do we recover from COVID, how do we move forward from COVID, but also the challenges that we have in our schools right now from new curriculum, uh, the LEARNS Act, mm -hmm. new standards coming out from the state, financial challenges, all these different pieces that we deal with in public schools. How do you view it now, having served as a board member for mm -hmm. almost two years, as opposed to what you saw before serving as a board member. Has it changed or is it the same? And how would you parallel those, those observations? Well, I definitely think it's different. Uh, before, of course, before being a board member, you see the process when you're coming to the meetings, but you don't, you don't really get to hear every bit of the discussion. Yeah. Um, so being a board member, you're in on all those discussions. So I do think that there's, there's more challenges, obviously, in every field, including the medical, after COVID. Um, the behaviors obviously have gotten worse after COVID um, because we were home and now some of the kids had been home for almost a year and a half. Yeah. And so now they're coming back into a structured environment. And so I think that's been hard on uh, the staff, the teachers, the principals. But the thing that makes me really happy is I feel like our structure, our administration, the team you've put together, and I call it the dream team, uh, but the, the 92 basketball team, yes. the dream team, yes. the dream team that we have now, they seem to really be tackling down at the lower level. So I think we're really hitting reading, and I expect our reading scores are going to come up in the next couple of years. Yeah. And I'm really excited about the direction 
that the district's headed. I think, uh, again, with public schools, we all have, have challenges, but Conway's always been special, and I expect us to keep being special. Again, with the group we have, starts with you and our leadership. We've got excellent principals, and we've always had good teachers. Yeah. And again, we've just got to make sure that we keep those teachers wanting to stay in the field. Yeah. Because like every other thing after COVID, even in medicine, we had a, nor a nursing shortage. Mm. Well, with the teachers, it's the same thing. Some of them have left teaching altogether. And so again, we just got to make sure we keep those people. And I appreciate the perspective you bring, not just as a medical doctor, but I know as a former athlete, and you and I have talked about sports for sure. years since I've been here. So you also bring that competitive edge. And I remember one of the first challenges you gave us as a board and as a superintendent, you said to me, you said, Dr. Collum, we have to up our game. We, we have to be the best here in Conway. Mm -hmm. And so you were a part of coming in, getting on the board, helping us stand things back up and move forward, not just from COVID, but just from all the different learning sure. challenges that we've endured over the years. Um, so I appreciate that perspective as a, as a doctor, but also as a competitor and Absolutely. wanting to keep that spirit of competition alive, not just in the Conway Public Schools, but we're competing against surrounding school districts and even other states now Absolutely. for teachers and, mm -hmm. and quality education. And so thank you for that perspective. And let me kind of segue into the next question, which is, what do you think are essential characteristics of an effective board member? Well, I think for me, I think the number one thing is you've got to be able to listen mm -hmm. because you, you get hit with people in the public. You, you, get, you talk to teachers, you talk to administrators, you have uh, all different perspectives, which is great, but you have to be able to listen mm -hmm. and listen to what they're saying. And then you have to follow up and say, okay, is this really what's happening here or there? But I think the best quality is listening to be a good board member. And I mean, man, we've got an excellent board. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the board we've got. We've got a lot of different personalities on the board, but, but all very, very strong board members. Yes, sir. And so it's a, it's a great team to be a part of. I agree, and you were on the board when we traveled and, uh, to Dallas and went to a team of eight training. And, and I learned a lot there, and I think Absolutely. we learned a lot seven board members, the superintendent, that's the leadership team of the district. And so how we function together as a team of eight, making decisions and whether we disagree or agree, how do we make those decisions together as a team of eight? And you were a part of that. And I wanna say again, I appreciate your leadership and, and the passion that you bring to the job. Um, it doesn't pay well. Uh, matter of <laughs> well, fact, it doesn't pay at all. Uh, so well, it's, it's, it's all good, you know, it, it's just, being a lifetime Wampus Cat, it's just awesome. Well, and that's the final question. I love asking this question because it always brings out the passion for this school district. You've been a Wampus Cat. You've got family members mm -hmm. that have been Wampus Cats. What does it mean to you, Dr. Naylor, to be a Wampus Cat and the pride that is in this community for being a part of the schools? Well, I think first, when we talk about Wampus Cats, I always say, all right, you got you to know the definition. That's right. You got to know that it's a six-legged cat. And we got four to run with and two to fight with. That's right. So you, you got to know that up front. And I had to learn that. Yeah, you got to know that. Now I know. You got to know that. When you say Wampus Cat, you got to know what they mean. And then after that, I think you the word you used is pride. Mm -hmm. Because what comes with me over all these years is I still get really prideful when I put the blue on. Mm -hmm. When I put the blue on to go to a football game or a baseball game or a basketball game or a, a choir concert or watch the band or whatever we've got district wide. But when you put that blue on with that wampus cat and you're in front of other people in the state or the nation, there is a lot of pride that goes with that. Yes. And so every time I put that on over the last 40 years, it still feels the same to me. Yeah. And so that's what being a wampus cat is, is all the people before us that have laid the foundation for this great district. When you put that cat on, Man, there's a lot of pressure because it's been a good district. It's been, it's been great for a long time, and we've just got to keep doing that. Yeah. And then when you cut yourself, I always say, you got to bleed blue. Yeah, yeah. Blue needs to come out of your veins. Hey, and I'm telling you, <laughs> from interviewing for this job three years ago to, to serving now as a superintendent of schools, and, and now I have three sons who are also Wampus Cats, mm -hmm. 
I can tell you, we bleed blue. We've adopted this into our family. Uh, and I'm excited as a dad, uh, and I'm also very excited as a superintendent about where we're going with the Conway Public Schools. And so, Dr. Naylor, thank you for your leadership and, and what you bring to the table as a school board member and as a, a parent and a patron of this community. Anything you want to say in final words uh, as we wrap up this series to get to know your school board member? No, I, I just, again, appreciate it. I've got one son that's graduated. I've got one that's a senior this year. So that's a special moment. He's going through his senior year, uh, getting ready for college. And then uh, I appreciate my wife. She's been a uh, backbone through all this. Now, she's a North Little Rock graduate. <laughs> We won't, so, so, hey, we won't hold it against so, her. So, hey, hey, we had to convert her. <laughs> but after having two sons wear the blue, this blue, for a long time, I think she's probably converted I to a Waffle Scout. I bet she's in. I bet she's in. Well, that's awesome. And as you can tell, every time we talk to a board member and, and even our community, you can just feel that sense of pride and support for the schools. And so that's an honor for me as superintendent to get to know these guys and gals on a better uh, personal level and also professionally just see how much – they love our school system. So this wraps up Get to Know Your Board Member Series. Uh, we'll continue these in the future, but thank you, Dr. Naylor, and thank you, Appreciate School Board, for, for the time and the investment Appreciate you have it. in this community.